Hello again and welcome to tutorial 2 in this series of Diaspora Space Build 4 tutorials. Today we're going to actually build a ship and then start equipping it with life support and all that other good stuff. So jumping right into the actual building process at 5 times speed. Um, I chose the Cirrus mod pack as I mentioned in the last video just because I like the look of it and because I'm trying to build a slightly larger than normal ship. So very quickly lining the props up and a vague fashion, I didn't have much thought going into actually building the ship, and then using the precision tool, just snapping mostly midpoint to midpoint. And here I had a little bit of an issue because these props, well, they don't exactly mirror correctly, you need to find a right and left version. So now I'm trying to look for something to fit in the middle, I go for some glass props, and because there isn't a 3 by one version, three of the one by ones And now, to try and find a bridge, and that tip I mentioned yesterday where you can pick vehicles out of the ground using the precision tool. Came in very handy there with this prop and this prop as well that got a little bit stuck. But of course if I drop them they go all the way through so keep an eye on those. Bringing around the lower floor of it now. It's very quickly trying to find other glass props to have any sort of bridge style thing on this. And finally cockpit models. Going corner to corner very quickly, and there we go. That's pretty much the interior of the holdown. So now I go to the exterior folder. So I find some just ramps here, pretty much, just to smooth that part out. Like in the look of that, I go for these plates on top. They're kind of not very commonly used, so stick one on each side because the ship's big enough. Okay, I've slowed the footage down here just a little bit so as to better explain this. Um, problem which I had, which I had to overcome, which is basically to use the smart snap grid from that prop to that prop because there wasn't essentially this part on top, I had no proper connection point to connect to. So what I did was I moved it just onto here and then welded it. And then by making sure they wouldn't collide with any world, I was um, able to now move only the top part because you can't move more than one prop with the uh, precision tool, despite what it might try to claim, and then just unfreeze it so it slid into place. Finally, some curve bits just to sort of deal with the overhang I left on there. I'm going to put something here as well. And yeah, there we go. That's quite a simple ship that I threw together in about 20 minutes. So, now that we've achieved our hull, the next step, of course, is to weld it all. So with the multi-weld tool, you can hold E to select everything, and then just right-click on a nice large prop in the middle. is definitely the best thing to do, and right-click to weld everything to it. Now, you don't have to worry about anything being knocked off accidentally. And what I'd like to do here is now, I can use the precision tool to apply properties to every single prop on the ship. So now it won't collide with anything, and it won't have any shadows, which is nice for frames per second, mostly. Another handy feature of the precision tool, which I'm demonstrating right here, is the nudge function. Usually with right click and reload, you can nudge things forward and backwards respectively using that value that you type into the top of the config menu. And if you have everything selected with the um, advanced use entire contraption mode, then you can nudge your entire ship so you can move it around, say if you need to get it out of someone's way or move it over to a water source without it being parented and without your entire ship falling apart. And since you can also put in very small values, it's great for aligning things to that maximum OCD level of precision. So, very good thing to know about. Now that everything is welded, what you want to do is take a duplicate of your ship. So just take out the Advanced Duplicator tool and just right-click on any prop. Then you can hit the Save to Server button and type in a file name, make it something recognizable and a description option if you want. You will probably want to be saving your ship multiple times through the building process, especially if it's something big and complicated. And definitely throughout the entire process we'll be working on life support and everything like that. Because, especially on this server, bad things can happen occasionally, which is why you'll want to have saves as frequently as possible. So there we go. So once you've saved it, it can be a good idea sometimes just to go through the menu and check that it is indeed there. Because you never know, sometimes it might get lost. So, when it comes to loading your ship up later, what you want to go to do is hit the open button, and something to consider here is based on the height of the ship when it was duplicated, if it was low enough then that height will be saved in the dupe, but otherwise you can make use of the 
height offset sliders. And another thing to note of is the placed at original angles. You will basically always want this enabled. So here I use the height offset to take it out of the ground. And now I'm quickly going to show you why always place at original angles and also always build at 90 degree angles because adding to a ship at awkward angles can be very difficult. You're never going to get anything aligned to it again. So just save yourself the hassle. So since that covers it for Advanced Duplicator 1, we're going to move on to its successor, which is pretty much better in every way, both for you in terms of the UI and for the server in terms of load. It has a much more robust options menu with a bunch of different things that can come in handy quite a lot. So it works much the same way as Advanced Duplicator 1. You right click and you have a ghost of your ship. Even though it's here, it's not stuck in the floor like with Advanced Duplicator 1. To save it, simply type a file name into the box and then hit the save button on the right. You may notice once it's saved here, it appears outside the Advanced Duplicator folder. This may not still happen since we have a newer version of Advanced Duplicator 2 that's been custom designed for this server at the moment, which also has a faster load time, so that won't take as long, but handy tip in the meantime, you can hold Shift, Alt, and right click to clear your ghost palette. That way you don't have to be waving your ghost around the entire time. So once it's done reloading, you'll find your dupe in there just as normal. Double click it to load the ghost, or you can alternatively right click and hit open, and paste, similar to Advanced Dupe 1. There are a number of checkboxes as well as options below, so you can configure if it spawns with parenting or if it spawns with constraints. We would recommend not duping after parenting anyway on this server, just because of the occasional collision and physics issues that can come with that. Another handy feature is um, area copy, so if you hold shift and I'm right click, you open up this little box, which you can mouse around to try and get everything in. There's a slider there, or alternatively hold E and use the mouse wheel to increase the size, and then right click, and it will copy everything in there, regardless of whether or not they're all constrained. Very handy. Now, Advanced Dupe 2, being the successor to Advanced Dupe 1, has backwards compatibility. It can load any Advanced Dupe 1 file from that Advanced Dupe 1 folder at the top, just like it was in Advanced Dupe 1, except with the additional benefits of faster loading and less strain. And then you can also use the offsets menu to raise it out of the ground just like we did with Advanced Dupe 1. That backwards compatibility doesn't go the forward direction I suppose, so Advanced Dupe 2 can often be used to try and save ships that um, sometimes will not either paste with Advanced Dupe 1 or won't save with Advanced Dupe 1, so it's nice to have that there. So now that you have a dupe of it, the next most important thing to consider is a core. The core is the part that's going to protect your ship from damage and give it all its health points, as well as enabling life support and weapon systems to function. So the first thing you want to want to do is find a prop to be your core. It can be literally anything, but you're going to want it to be somewhere where it's accessible so you can access its config menu. So something reasonably small you can fit inside your corridor and someplace relatively central so you can get to it quickly. It's generally the best thing to do. So here I decided on just one of these um, equipment mounts and just roughly stick it on a wall. You can put as much effort or as little effort into this as you want to. So position it, and then once you've got somewhere semi-satisfactory, this is now, you do not want to go and weld it immediately. You only weld it once it's made into a core. And you want to keep it frozen for when you turn it into a core as well. Otherwise it could just drop. So the core menu this is the picture you're going to be looking at now. There's a description up there, you can read it, or you can follow the tutorial I'm about to give you. First thing to do is set a color. This is the glow that's going to be around the outside of your ship, so make something pretty. And then you're going to have to consider where you're going to put your points. You have 100 points between all of these sliders, and each one's going to affect a different stat. Shield, armor, and hull will pretty much just affect the base hit points for each of those things. Shield will recharge how quickly your shield recharges, and how much recharge per second. Capacitor increases the size of the capacitor. Capacitor recharge increases the recharge rate of your capacitor. All very simple. There is quite a science to figuring out the best point distribution. And one important thing to remember is you can have values go negative to put more points into other things. So a common tactic will be to forsake completely armor and hull in favor of putting more points into shield and shield recharge. Or doing the opposite, forsaking shield, shield recharge, and hull to have even more points in armor. Each slider can go to a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 200. Even though the sliders, if you drag them all the way up, they'll just stack cap at 100, you can type your own values in there. 
even though you can get a maximum of 225 points, only 200 of them will go into effect if you put more than that into a single slider. So you're going to have to put those 200 points, or those 25 points somewhere else if you're going to go for everything into one thing, which would not be recommended since capacitor especially is very important and you're still going to need hit points along with it. So here in the footage I'm just going to be distributing my full allotment of points. I'm going mostly for an armor tank, or armor buffer, with a good number of points in capacitor just roughly placed. I didn't put much thought into this. A couple of points in armor, a couple of points in shield, and type in the last value to use up every single point, and there we go. Now to actually make the core, you simply click on your prop. And there you go, it turns into a core. Now it's going to have some very low values at the moment, because it's not welded to anything, and it calculates your health based off of your ship, so you need to weld it to it, so it can do that. So, weld it to the parent prop, which is here, and the values will update. There you go, you can see 5 million armor, 4 million shield, we're doing pretty well there. The signature radius, or SIGRAD for short, is what determines which class it is, so here we have a cruiser. And the final value at the bottom is the node radius, which controls how far away you can link devices for your life support network. And there you go, now that you have your core in place, go ahead and dupe your ship again, because that covers everything for this tutorial. You now have your ship, you now have a core on it, and you now have some copies of it, hopefully. So, next time we will be equipping life support, so you don't die in space. Pretty important. See you then.